and to honor and praise the holy name of Jesus, the greatest gift of all. Before we begin our liturgy, you are kindly requested to turn off all electronic devices, including cell phones. This liturgy is being offered for the happy repose of the soul of Josephine Sanguinito and also for the people of the parish. We begin our prayer by standing and joining in singing number 606, Glory and Praise to Our God, number 606. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We gather together as a parish family to celebrate the great feast of the baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we reflect on his baptism, we're also mindful of our own baptism, where we have become children of God. And so as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins, asking the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have seriously sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, all the angels and saints, to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Praise you. 
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The readings can be found at 1012-1012. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his teaching. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. The words to the antiphon to the psalm are, the Lord will bless his people with peace.
a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites as you proclaim peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all, what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts whether John might be the Christ. John answered them, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with Holy Spirit and fire. After all the people had been baptized, and Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son, With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. The The baptism of the Lord is an interesting place in our liturgical calendar. With this feast, we close the Christmas season and we begin what we call the season of ordinary times. In other words, we will not hear about the birth and early life of Jesus anymore. Next week, we'll transition into beginning accounts of Jesus' public ministry. But today, we're in year C, and we're hearing the account of the baptism of Jesus by John the Baptist. It's recorded here that I just read that afterwards, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove, and the voice from heaven You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. As I mentioned, the baptism marks the beginning of the public ministry of Jesus. A lot of times we ask, well, why did Jesus be baptized? You know, it's not like he had committed any sins. 
Well, we look at this, and this is what we reflect on. In this scene, Jesus receives his identity, a beloved son, and he's filled with the Holy Spirit. But this is not to say that Jesus didn't know who he was or that the Holy Spirit was not present to him from all eternity. It's for our sake that God revealed himself in a hidden way. Think about this. The voice of the Father, the presence of Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity. At the baptism of Jesus, there's another epiphany, another revelation of God. Now, in his public ministry, Jesus begins to preach, to teach, to heal, and ultimately lead up to his death and resurrection. Jesus, at his baptism, is confirmed in his identity and strengthened to begin his mission, his mission to rescue all humanity, well, to rescue you and me from the hostile environment we call the world and lead us to live as a member of his family for all eternity. Now, when I say the world in a hostile world, I'm not saying that the world in regards to the creation is hostile. I'm more referring to it in the sense of, of when we live in a way that is contrary to God. When we dismiss the presence of God and we live according to our own standards. That's what I mean when we're saying we live to the world and we ignore the guidance and teaching of God. See, Jesus' baptism causes you and I to reflect on our own baptism. See, by analogy, similar things occur. When you were a child, or perhaps as an adult, water was poured on your head and you heard these words, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We too, at that moment, receive our identity. This is so important. At our baptism, you become a son or a daughter of God in the Son. Who are you? Who are you? That's our answer. I'm a son of God. I'm a beloved son. You're a beloved son or beloved daughter. And I think our spiritual life is growing and accepting and living that identity. That's the challenge we have. We too, in our baptisms, are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit descends in this sacrament to live within us. That's why we become temples of the Holy Spirit. And we're united to Jesus Christ, the Son, and so we become members of the body of Christ. This is very rich, and it takes time to reflect on this. But if we walk away from anything today, I want to walk away to remind us of who we are. Because the world tells us who we are, or it distorts that vision. No matter what, you are loved by God. And we strive to live as a member of his family. The life of the Trinitarian God is poured into our soul. Theolog theologians use the word sanctifying grace. This grace is what gives us supernatural life. We share in the divine life of God by grace. This supernatural life, this grace, or we could actually say it another way, the love of God must grow and increase, take root and bear fruit in our lives. There's a, in the rite of baptism, there's a neat scene when, when the child is given a white garment. This prayer accompanies this. You have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in Christ. See in this white garment an, an outward sign of your Christian dignity. With your family and friends to help you by word and example, bring that dignity unstained into the everlasting life of heaven. So when we're baptized, we put on Christ. Sanctifying grace, this supernatural life of God we call, or another way of saying the love of God can grow or increase within us. Or, sanctifying grace, the love of God can wither 
and diminish within us. The choice is up to us. This life, this grace, this love, I'm using those words somewhat interchangeably. That's why I'm saying them. This life, this supernatural life, this sanctifying grace, in other words, if the love of God grows, it grows within us through our relationship with God. So when we think of grace, I don't want you to think of a quantity. Like I've got 17 gallons of grace in me. Uh, Grace is a relationship. And when we grow in our relationship with God, when we grow in our relationship with one another, that love of God grows and intensifies with us. But this supernatural life can also diminish. It can wither. And possibly it can even die within us. When we choose to sin, when we live as if God does not exist, when we ignore the needs of our neighbor, when our lives do not reflect the love of God in our words and actions. In other words, when we damage our relationship with God and with others. However, our, our faith teaches us that the life of sanctifying grace can be restored and healed through the celebration of the sacraments, weekly Eucharist, and of course, the sacrament of reconciliation. I always like to say this, as long as there is breath in our lungs, there is hope for us to experience eternal life, what we call heaven. All right, that's enough theology for now. Let me give you an analogy or an image maybe. Grace, the love of God, you heard in that prayer, a protect, put on Christ. Grace, the love of God, is kind of like a protective suit which helps us navigate in this hostile environment and live in heaven. What? Is anyone following me? Or like, what are you talking about, Father? All right, let me give you some examples. How can a firefighter enter into a blazing building to rescue someone? He or she wears a special suit made which prevents the flames from scorching him. What happens if he decides, you know what, I'm going to take my mask off and my, my, uh, my jacket and my boots? What happens? Without protective um, equipment, he can be consumed by the flames and die. How can a scuba diver explore the hidden yet beautiful underworld of the sea. They need special equipment, which allows them to breathe underwater. Lesson number one in scuba diving. If you have your mouthpiece in and you have to cough, don't take it out. When you're 80 feet underwater and you start getting, (coughs) keep it in. But what your reaction is to, (gasps) okay? If you take out that mouthpiece, All right? What happens? You can choke and die. Without this equipment, you cannot live in that environment. How about astronauts who live in the International Space Station? If they need to enter into the vacuum of space to fix or make exterior adjustments to the ISS, they must put on a special suit, which allows them to breathe, to be protected from the harsh cold, and to communicate with each other. What happens if they would take that suit off in the vacuum of space? I don't even want you to think about it because it would be ugly. Instantaneously, you'd, you'd fall apart because there's no pressure holding you together. You would die. Now, why do I keep saying that? You will die. I'm not fixating on that. I'm saying you can live if you use that suit, right? So what's the analogy? You cannot live underwater without scuba gear. You cannot survive a fiery structure without special fire gear. You cannot explore space without a specialized space suit. Well, you cannot live in heaven without sanctifying grace, If you do not have the grace of God alive within you, you cannot live in heaven. That's what it means when we say hell. Hell is dying because we choose to not live in the grace of God. So 
God never sends anyone to hell. It's our choice. You see, when we reject the life that God wants to give us, if we cooperate with that grace, we can live forever. And one last imagine, image with this analogy. You know, in each of those cases, those, that equipment needs to be serviced. <laughs> if you let your mouthpiece dry out, or you don't make sure there's no ruptures in the spacesuit, or if you have worn fire gear, when you actually try to go into those environments, you can do severe damage. So that needs to be maintained. Okay? Our spiritual life is like that. In baptism, we are given that protective suit. Our identity as beloved sons or daughters allow us to navigate in this hostile world. Our identity needs to be maintained and serviced. How? We need the sanctifying grace of God, the love of God alive in our souls. This life is maintained through a daily prayer life, our frequent reception of the sacraments. In fact, the church teaches that it is essential for us each week to celebrate the Eucharist through Sunday Mass. If we have sinned in a serious way, we should receive the restorative grace from the Sacrament of Reconciliation. When the grace of God is alive in us, we are equipped to fulfill our God-given mission. We, you and I, are called to bring the love of God into this world through our words and through our actions. Our life, through the grace of God, is a living presence of God. We bring God into the world through our actions, through our words, and every moment of our life. This is the incredible effects of baptism. We are called to renew our baptismal commitment each week when we gather, when we recite the creed. That's a fleshed out baptismal creed. It's a summary of our Catholic faith. When we receive the Eucharist, when we open our hearts, the Holy Spirit is alive in us. God is within us. And we must pray to that God may direct our minds and our hearts and our thoughts and our actions to fulfill the mission that has been entrusted to us. Heavenly Father, help us to live as beloved daughters and sons. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down. And by the Holy Spirit, he was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Because of our baptism, we are able to offer these petitions to God as our Father. Our response is, Lord, be born in us. That the church may effectively lead all peoples to acknowledge Christ as the Son of God, 
we pray to the Lord, Lord, be born in us, that the Christian community, made one by our common baptism, may always welcome the unborn, the stranger, and all who are vulnerable. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord be, be born, born in, in us. us, that each of us may renew the commitment of our own baptism, renouncing sin and promising to serve God faithfully in his holy church. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord be, be born, born in us. us. For the Synod, that the Holy Spirit will renew the church and guide all members to take greater responsibility for sharing the gospel message. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord be, be born, born in us. us. For an end to the coronavirus pandemic, that God will free us from this dangerous virus, make the vaccines effective, and help us to rebuild our communities of faith. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord be, be born, born in us. us. For the people of the parish and all families, that our merciful Father may continue to bless us, keep us, and help us to grow together in love and faith. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord be, be born, born in us. That those who are ill may, as sons and daughters of God, offer their sufferings to him with patience and trust. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord be, be born, born in us. For all who have died, especially Josephine Sanguinito and our recently deceased Mary Azalina, that they may share the glory of the eternal life. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord be, be born, born in, in us. For all the intentions we hold close to our hearts. We pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord be, be born, born in us. We thank you, Lord, for making us your children. Answer the prayers we have offered today with confidence and trust. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we offer our gifts to the Father, we join in singing number 903, baptized in water, number 903. Baptized in water, sealed by the Spirit, cleansed by the blood of Christ our King, heirs of salvation, trusting His promise. Yeah. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross, to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed unto us, 
and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis, our Pope, Alfred, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Anthony, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ, with the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but all I say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
as we come forward to receive Jesus, we join in singing number 588, I Have Loved You, number 588.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may by your children, may, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. I've been asked to announce the following. In the vestibule, members of the Holy Name Society will be selling the lottery tickets for the month of February. The tickets are $5 each. The Golden Agers will, hold, will not hold their meeting tomorrow. It's been canceled. And renewed in faith, we go forth singing number 615, Holy God, we praise thy name, number 615.